If you have your Bible this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is where we'll be at, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm continuing on my series on transformation. Today we're going to be transformed from defeat to victory. With it being Super Bowl sunny, I figured that would be a good topic to have. As these teams are going out there and they each and every one of those players, coaches and fans are wanting a win for their team. The goal for everyone out there today is for a victory. So what if I told you today that I could guarantee you a victory? Now I'm not talking about the Super Bowl. I'm talking about eternity. When I say that I'm guaranteeing a victory, I'm also not telling you that you're never going to be scored on, that you're never going to have any injuries, that you're never going to have to take a timeout. I simply said if I could tell you how that you could have victory. And today I can, because I can tell you about the life that Christ gives us. And that transformed life is for sure victory, and it's victory over several different things. God wants us today to have victory. He doesn't want us to feel sad. He doesn't want to feel us to feel bad. But our problem was we were born into this world and we were on the wrong team. We were on a team that could not win, that had no hope of winning. They was losing before they even got started, and that's a team we got put on. But I want to say this to you today. Just like any other kind of trade, the father decided that he wanted you on his team. And when you start talking about trades, and if you're a sports person, you understand this. When you start talking about trades, if they know you have something that you want, they make the price awful hard. And the price for you and I today to trade teams was the death of the Lord Jesus. The cost was high because it was his blood shed on the cross of Calvary. It wasn't simply, you come on and be on my team. It was, it's going to cost him a great deal. Maybe it's free to you and I today, but it cost the Lord Jesus everything. And so this morning, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you got traded from the losing team to the winning team. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior today, you're no longer bound for defeat, but you're down for victory. So I want to give you that victory today. I want to show you three things that we have victory in today. And hopefully, if you don't know Christ right now when you leave this place you will that's our desire these things are written the bible says that you may know that you have eternal life and i want you all to go out winners today let's read this first corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Make sure we get that right there, the last part, in the Lord. I think we have victory today over a couple of things, and I think we have victory through one person. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. The first thing I think is very obvious, today we have victory over sin. If we read verse 52, it says, In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. As we get going today, let me say today that if you know Christ, this change has already started on you. That doesn't mean you're without sin, but it means we have conquered sin through Christ. This morning, you may have already had to make choices. Sometimes we talk about sin and we think about big choices. Sometimes it's little choices that isn't exactly right. Should I eat that third donut today? 
I'm running, I'm running late to Sunday school. Should I drive 60 miles an hour in that 25 zone? You know, there's little things that we can catch ourselves going and we say, I want to do right, but yet here I am and I'm going wrong. And it's not because we have to sin. Sometimes it's just that we make the wrong choice. What we find here is when we go to meet the Lord, when we're in heaven one day, we're not going to have to worry about it because we are going to be changed. When we get to heaven, there's going to be something different about us. We're not going to be having that desire to sin. We're not even going to have that temptation to sin. Isn't that good? You got a bunch of cupcakes sitting in your garage waiting for Super Bowl. That's a temptation to me. <laughs> I'm thinking, why? We, we got the candy for Halloween, and they stuck that in my office last year. And I said, don't stick that in my office this year. They said, why not? Because the temptation is too great for me. Uh, you get over there, you look at them candy bars, and you say, wow, I like to have that candy bar. You know, I, I want a little bit of that. When I get to heaven, I'm not going to be tempted by things like that or worse things than that. But right now, I'm having to deal with it. Paul says this, the things that I would do, I don't. And the things I don't want to do, I do. That's temptation. And Paul says, I'm struggling with it. And guess what? So are we today. Every one of us have a different temptation. I may be sitting here talking about candy bars. You say, I can't believe you're that weak, Pastor. But you may be with a home shopping network. That may be your weakness, right? <laughs> we all have different things that tempt us, and we sometimes give into that temptation. You teenagers probably have different temptations than I have. Am I going to do my homework? Am I going to get up and go to class? Am I going to pay attention? All these different things that can tempt you, and you say, I don't know if I'm ready to do this or willing to do this. Maybe as a senior adult, you have a different temptation, but we all have temptations, and we're always going to deal with that. But listen, today we have victory over that sin. Christ's blood is sufficient to cover all sins. We have the Holy Spirit that stays with us, and so even when I'm doing wrong, he's going to tell me, you're doing wrong. Stop doing it. Let's not okay it. Let's start listening to what he says and quit doing it. Maybe sometimes you can get discouraged when you make the wrong choice. I know sometimes, and I'm still talking about food, maybe the Lord's getting on me about this. I don't know. <laughs> I'll go downstairs at nighttime, you know, before I go to bed and check the doors are locked. And I sneak over to the candy cabinet. <laughs> I'm saying I'm sneaking because I don't want Lori to know. She doesn't know this. I'm giving up. And I try to eat it before I come back upstairs. You know, I get up something and snack on it. But you know, sometimes you get discouraged. Like, Why did I do that? I didn't need to eat that right now. We can get discouraged when we mess up. But listen, even though we give ourselves over to temptation, sometimes the Lord forgives us. The Lord says, I have a greater power than this. And I'm joking a little bit about the food today, but you know, maybe you're sitting here today and you're struggling with other things. And the Lord says, I've got this under control. I've got the power to help you overcome. Sin's been defeated. It doesn't hold it over you anymore. As a believer, we have a Savior that does that. The Bible says that we shall all be changed. There's come a time when this old body isn't going to be one I'm running around with. And I've got a young body to some of y'all, and to some of you all, I've got an old body, you know. I've talked to people this week, and they have worn out bodies. And they're in wheelchairs, and they're in hospice care, and they're in hospitals. And I know they're looking for that new life that comes from that new body. The Bible says that there's a trump that's going to sound. I want to say something about that real fast. Because we don't know when the trumpet's going to sound. But it says that trumpet's going to sound, and listen to me today. You may say, Pastor, I'm 12 years old, I'm 15 years old, I'm 18 years old, I'm 40 years old, I'm 50 years old, whatever it may be, I'm okay. But one day the trumpet is going to sound, and it says those that are alive are going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Are you ready if the trumpet sounds? If a horn blew right now, if that trumpet sound right now, and that meant the difference in staying here or going to be with the Lord, where would you be at? Something to think about as we go through this message today. Where would we be at? 
But he says, we're going to be new. We're going to have a new body. We're going to put on a new flesh. And this old mortal body, this old sinful body is going to be changed. And everything that bothers you today and everything that hurts you and everything that aches is going to be gone. Because we're going to have a new body. Sin has been defeated. The second thing we find here is victory over death. In verse 55, he says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? One thing I noticed this week as I was watching the news, I remember last Sunday, I was outside with Carter for just a few minutes and Lori came out and she said, Kobe Bryant just had a helicopter crash and he's dead. Started watching the news to see what's going on because I thought, this can't be. The guy's 41 years old. He was just on the news. He was just on the TV. You know, he was just doing all this stuff. He said, not only is Kobe dead, but his daughter, his oldest daughter, has also died in this plane crash. Seven other people. And I realized something about death. Death is no respecter of persons. Kobe wasn't the youngest one on that plane. Teenage daughter, seemed like another girl probably about her age that was a friend, a husband and wife, I think the basketball coach, a pilot, and every one of them got on that helicopter that day expecting just to avoid some traffic, just some traffic. Kobe didn't want to sit in that long traffic, he has aches and pains from playing ball, so he said he oftentimes took his helicopter, I guess just about everywhere. A routine Sunday for him. And yet, he didn't make it back home. His daughter didn't make it back home. These seven other people didn't make it back home. Sounds like death has the victory, except that we need to remember that we know the one who conquered death. We look at death and we are afraid because sometimes my wife and I was talking, she said, you know, as much as we know about the Bible, there's still an uncertainty about it. And yet if we really get into the truth of the word of God, the Bible promises something, right? Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. This is for the saved. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will doubtless come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. I want to say this to you today. We got promises of gates of pearls and streets of gold, but we got the greatest promise of all that Jesus is going to be there with me and you. That's what heaven's about. That's the thing that God wants us to understand. When we talk about death, death has been defeated because death is eternal separation from the Father. And what does Jesus say? Now that you know me, not only are we not separated, we're standing right there together. We're spending time together. We're going to do eternity together. That's good stuff. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You know that? Death is a scary thing because of that uncertainty. But when Jesus passed on the cross, when he paid for our price, we have the victory. So there's not that sting anymore. Where is your victory? Death, you don't have it anymore because the one that conquered you has the victory. As I started off, this week, it started off, you had the Kobe death, and we had folks in our church here that's lost loved ones. I hate that because it makes you just feel like, Lord, what's going on? A young couple came to our service last week. They've come multiple times this past week as they were doing his uh, father's um, kidney, the, uh, what do you dialysis thank you seems he had a heart attack he died unexpectedly so the young couple came in and they were going to use the church for some things and I've met him a couple of times but I never had a chance to sit down and really talk with him and we we're back here in that back hallway back there and I said I want to ask you a question and the man said sure go ahead and I said let me ask you this right now I've been wanting to how about you? Are you ready to leave this world? Do you know Christ is your Savior? And he said, I do. 
And I said, that's fantastic. You remember? He said, yeah, I was a younger boy and I received Christ. I know I'm saved. I said, that is awesome. That's the most important thing. Then I looked at his wife and I said, how about you? And she said, I do not. And I said, then let me tell you how you can. And I told her, I said, listen, everybody in here, this world, like I said, we started off, we're playing from the wrong team. The scripture says, for all have sinned. That means we're separated from God. We're not on the right side. We're on the losing side. We're on the side that's going to be defeated. There is no victory for us. For all have sinned and we've come short of the glory of God. I told her, the wage is a sin. That penalty for sin is death. That's what God says. If the Adam and Eve, if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. That's the penalty. People look at sin and say, well, it's not that big a deal. It was disobedience, folks. That was the first sin. Disobedience. And wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world. How? By disobedience. I've never killed an immediate. Amen, I haven't either. But guess what I did as a little boy? I disobeyed. We're all guilty. If you've never done any other thing in your life, every single one of us in here has disobeyed. That means that sin separates me from God. For the wages of sin is death, but... Don't you like when I get to that part? But! And I told her the gift of God. The gift not the thing that you have to earn. There are certainly ways we wish people would live better. Maybe you're looking at you said, I wish my kids lived better. I wish my parents lived better. I wish my wife lived better. I wish my husband lived better. But here it is. But the gift of God is eternal life. Not just a little life. Not just partial life. Not just life on this planet, but eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I told that young lady, I said, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you'll talk to him and ask him to forgive you of your sins, if you will say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner and I want you to forgive me of those sins, and you believe in your heart what that God hath raised him from the dead. Jesus, I know and I believe that you died for me. That's a big important thing because you can say, I believe Jesus died, but if you don't believe he died for you, then it's not going to help you. If you think he just died for me, then great for me, but what about you? Jesus, I believe you died for me and that you rose again for me. And then if I ask you to save me, or whosoever. Whosoever is anybody, right? He didn't say just a certain group of people. It said for whosoever. I like that word whosoever too. Because I can throw my name in there as whosoever. I can say for if Tim shall call upon the name of the Lord, he might be saved, right? No! He may be saved. He could be saved. He eventually may make it. No, it says he shall be saved. That's a Bible, right? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Teenagers, that's the real deal today. That's Bible. That's victory over death, right? Death wears your sting, here's your sting. It doesn't affect the person that knows Christ because they're not dying, they're going to eternity to be with him. To be absent from the body, the Bible says, is to be present with the Lord. A new life, right? Does it mean there's not sadness? Does it mean that there's not loss for us? But there is a gain. There's a gain. There's people that's struggling right now, and I think they're going through valleys over death, and it's right in our midst. And we're seeing people of all different ages going. And we need to remind ourselves that Christ has conquered death. Satan, what started off 
as death for mankind because of the sin that you helped introduce has been defeated. You have been defeated. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? I did three funerals last week. Two didn't know Christ, one did. There's a difference in the funeral. One is till we meet again. And the other's not. Finally this morning, we have victory over sin and over death through one person. And his name is Jesus. I know his name, don't you? I'm glad I can call out his name today. I don't have to just say the man upstairs or God. I can call him by his name because I know him. And he knows me better than that. Verse 57 says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our, check it out, our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you like that word, our? He's not just the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not your Lord Jesus Christ. He's our Lord Jesus Christ. Mine too. And I thank you, Jesus, because that's where victory really comes from. From you. Outside of him, I do not have victory over sin. Outside of him, I do not have victory over death. But through him, I have victory that only comes through Jesus. The song Victory in Jesus was the final song of Mr. E.M. Bartlett. The hymn was also his best known and most embraced song. It starts off with my life here and how I needed a savior to bring me victory. How I repented and it changed my life. The second verse talks about broken spirits and being defeated for so many reasons. And as he watched the Lord healing physical things, he said, Lord, I need a healing of my spirit. The final verse talks about the ultimate victory over death. Because it talks about glory and the place he has prepared for me. It says, I heard an old, old story. How the Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Hey, Christian, I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. But we're not done yet, are we? For anybody that suffered loss. I heard about a mansion he is built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And if you know Christ, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Sing with me. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere 
I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. The last verse of the scripture we read this morning is verse 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Jesus says this morning, I have given you the truth of victory. But how do we need to act knowing we have victory? If you ever watch sports, you're going to notice there's two types of people that are winning. There's a team that's winning that keeps going and pointing it on. And there's a team that starts playing just not to lose. Church, I think we saw the blessings of the Lord happen for years and years. And instead of fading for the victory... We just played not to lose. And the shape we're in today is not because we were one victory, it's because we were playing not to lose. Paul writes, I need to be steadfast and unmovable. Do not let my mind be swayed. Don't turn from the truth of the Lord of God. And no matter what man says, and no matter what public opinion deems, be unmovable, always abounding, which is to excel, to increase in the work of the Lord. The fact that we have victory doesn't mean there's not a war to still fight. That there's not a game to still be played. We're always to be moving forward if we're going to be winning. Your labor is not in vain because the win in the Lord is right ahead. As a teen and playing basketball years ago, I had a coach and we used to laugh at him because he always said, boys, I'm a winner. I'm a winner from the word go. And we'd all go around and when he wasn't around, we'd say, you know what? I'm a winner from the word go. And I remember some people used to get mad because they said, you shouldn't worry about winning or losing. You should just worry about playing the game. And I remember what the coach told us. He said, boys, he said, Jesus was a winner. And if you're going to be a winner, or if you're going to be like Jesus, you're going to be a a winner. I was sitting in a basketball game, and I remember it, and I might have shared this with you, but I remember we were in the opening thing, and the coach walked up to us. He said, boys, he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, this team that we're playing is better than you. They got better players. But he said, you know something? Every year we come and beat them. And so they're expecting to lose today and you're expecting to win. So what you expect to happen if you play will happen. And we went out there and guess what? We won. They didn't think they could beat us, so they didn't. You know what, Christian? If you don't think you can beat the devil, you're not going to beat him. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen today, if you don't know Jesus, if that trumpet is sound, would you be here or would you be with him? If you get in a car today, if you go out of this place and you leave this world in eternity, where are you going to spend it? Nine people last week got on a helicopter ride to avoid some traffic and they didn't go home. All over this world, people leave for eternity. Jesus says, I am here right now to give you victory, to transform your life. Victory over sin, victory over death, but it's only through me. Maybe you're sitting here today as a Christian, you know Jesus is your Savior, but you need some victory. You need to remember that second verse. I heard about him healing and it's physical, but I need something right here in my heart. Maybe I need to turn it over to him. If he's speaking to you today, don't worry about who's sitting next to you. Because I'm going to tell you something. If they're believers, they're going to be cheering you on. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. And Lord, as a church family, we pray that today souls will be saved. Lord, we pray today that lives will be changed. We pray that today we can have victory in a transformation right today. 
Lord, if they're the one that does not know you as their Savior, today I pray will be that day. For the Christian who has heartbreak that needs to turn that over to you just for some spiritual healing, Lord, I pray that today would be that day. For somebody that maybe needs to come and join this church or rededicate their life or surrender to service, Lord, whatever it is you're speaking to us today, Lord, give us that victory today that only comes from following after you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us this morning? Come on, would you come today?